had a situation last night. I received like a late text message from one of my guys that I'm helping for a show. And um, he's actually like a pro, you know, so he's pretty mentally strong and he's got him really far in the sport. Um, so he asked me, he's like, hey, no, no BS. Do you think I have what it takes to crack the top 10? So I said, dude, hold yourself together, man. You have two weeks out. Like, let's keep that head strong. You know, I was trying to motivate the guy. Let's keep that head strong. The only thing we could control is what we can control. Our conditioning, our posing, our muscularity, our stage presence. My job is to bring you in at 100%. And that's not what this athlete wanted to hear at all. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, so then I go like, hey, dude, never ask another man if you have what it takes to be successful at something. You wake up and you work your fucking ass off and you do whatever it fucking takes to accomplish that goal. No matter what anyone else thinks, no matter who bless you to do it, you do it anyways. My goal in the fitness industry was never to go pro, was never to make it to Olympia, was never to win the Arnold. My whole goal was to be on the cover of a magazine. And if I were to walk around and ask people close to me if I had what it takes, every one of those people would have said no, and I probably wouldn't have been motivated to pursue that goal. If I were to ask people if I have what it takes to go pro, all those people would look at me and say no. If I had what it takes to go to Olympia, they would look at me and say no. So the lesson here is people that are successful, they don't ask for permission to be great. You work your ass off to become great. Don't ask another man. Do whatever it fucking takes to achieve what you're passionate about and never ask for permission ever, ever, ever. You know what? Instead, take that insecurity, put it in the gas tank, and use it to propel you to eventual success. And on that note, YouTube is demanding a straight shoulder day. Me and Conrad are going to do straight shoulders today. I think what happened is you guys see my previous clip, and my shoulders just look so absurd and huge that I'm really going to show you three key strategic movements that I use to grow my delts exponentially. I'm not just talking about like having a good pump. But I grew my delts doing these three methodologies like night and day. I'm going to show you guys today. Dude, I haven't seen the sun in like fucking a year. Are we late to the gym today? I don't even know what the hell is going on. Weather's nice. Birds are chirping. Sun is out. It's going to be a nice fucking workout. I woke up with like a Coco Melon song stuck in my head. Crazy. That's my life. Oftentimes when I'm in a gym, you know, this is number one, like such a passion of mine, but number two, there is some methodology to my madness in terms of, I keep my rest intervals very down and I keep some good music bumping in my headphones and I am in a state of lifting heavy and going hard all the time that that makes people uncomfortable when they can't say hi to you. And I used to feel guilty, like, all right, you know what? I gotta speak to everyone that says hi. You know, I can't be mean like that or I can't be whatever self-absorbed like that. But what I eventually realized as I got older is just tell people you can't speak. Hey, now's not a good time, man. Is this important? Is it not important? Okay, I gotta go, you know? There's nothing wrong with that, you know? I'm 36 year old male. So it's like, you need to learn how to tell people no. If you're always appeasing people, then you're never gonna have success in the gym because you'll be stuck talking for like two minutes between every set. Um, and we all see people in a gym that never talk. Uh, whoa, I'm sorry. People in a gym that never make progress and always talk is what I meant. This guy's trying to race. Ah! Oh shit. God damn, I don't know what the hell that guy kept on going in and out. This guy does not want to race. I got my license, it's cool. My license is reinstated. But what I like about this car is it's fast, like after 80 miles per hour. It just continues climbing and climbing. You get to 140 real quick. And it's also super fast around cornering, which we're not gonna show you. All right, fine, we'll fucking show you. No problem, you practically squeezed it out of me. We're already at 80. We're already at 100. 
one tent. It's like you run out of road, actually. Ah, oh, shit. We're gonna get pulled over. I'm not sure. <laughs> By the way, these are made up. We're not even in miles per hour. These are made up increments. Would never, would never do something like this. I tell Chelsea all the time, don't worry, I'm a professional. You're a professional bodybuilder though. Like, yeah, same shit. Same, I'm a professional. But really, I actually personify, I, I believe that I'm actually a professional race car driver more so than I'm a professional bodybuilder. I wholeheartedly think that. I, well, I know that. I got some skills, man. I've been playing fucking car racing games since I was seven. I get very intense. I kind of just, I visualize and I believe so much in the outcome of what I'm trying to accomplish that like it already has happened. And I walk around in this state of seriousness and focus. And then when you're around society, society is the opposite of that. Society is like, yo, I'm going to go pick up my fucking $7 coffee from Starbucks and listen to fucking Miley Cyrus on the radio and chill, you know? And it's like, that's not what I'm doing. I think I'm visualizing the victory, how the trophy feels, what hand I'm going to hold the trophy in. What is the temperature in the room? What does the audience sound like? Is there a draft? Is there no draft? Am I wearing shoes? Am I not wearing shoes? Is the cold floor, uh, is the floor cold or is the floor warm? You know, like I visualize every single specific trait of like how that victory will feel. My boy gave me this. He owns a bubble tea shop. He trains here. He gave me a whole case. He knows I like this shit. So he's my friend. Uh, but I don't know anything about him. So Chelsea's like, how do you know him? I said, I don't know. She said, where does he live? I don't know. Like, what does he do for work? I said, I, I, don't, I don't know, but, you know, I'm hanging out with him. We're, you know. I said, how could you be friends with somebody you don't know anything about them? I said, because I'm a man. We don't even need to speak the same language and I'll be your friend, you know? So, you can't pick your friends, you know? Like, oh, you could pick your friends, but... You know what I'm trying to fucking say, dude. Men are different. We don't know shit about each other. Like Conrad, I don't know anything about fucking Conrad. I don't know nothing about this guy. Shoulder day. I used to train shoulders straight, alone. Like, not with another body group. But I do believe that shoulders can never be big, big enough, so. Especially side delts. It's so one of the most effective movements you can do for your side delts is side laterals. I'll use a variety of different stimuluses from dumbbell to cable to machine. And don't stop at four sets. Once you get in the groove, once you start feeling a pump, keep going, keep feeding that muscle more and more and more blood flow until it hurts to raise your arm in the air. That's how you know you have a good shoulder day. The way I do these, 10% bend in the elbow, not too drastic, 10% bend. And reach, reach outwards, okay? We don't wanna be here we want to be out with it, okay? And now, I won't stop at parallel. I'll actually go a little bit above parallel and control the way down. I'll spring up, control down. Spring up, control down. The muscle will actually grow on the way down as well. Not everything is just the upward motion. Give that a shot. The second most important thing for big ass delts is very controlled pressing movements, all right? We don't want to train our joints to go up and down fast. We want to kind of create that tension, contract, slow on the way down, explode, slow on the way down. Good range and good tempo. I promise you, you have cannibal delts. That's called a top set. We're gonna do one more top set because I felt extreme effectiveness with that weight. So we did eight reps. We'll try another set for six to eight. Whoa. Last set here. Now the hard thing about doing this set is bringing a dumbbell up. So put the dumbbell as close to the edge of your knee as you can and really kick up with your knee. That'll help take away a lot of the strain from the movement. 
That's nice. Workout was cut early. Um, got a text message from my wife. She's having like extreme stomach pains. So, you know, obviously we want to work out, but family comes first. We're going to rush home and make sure that Chelsea is doing okay. All right. You guys missed that. Wait, maybe you recorded it? You had the recording? Oh, you did. All right, what, whatever. Um, we left the gym early. My wife wasn't feeling good. A lot of stomach pains. She calls me back. Yo, I feel better. I'm like one block from the house. So what do champions do? Champions make the best of the situation. I'm back to the fucking gym, baby. We're back. Nice 15 minute break in between sets. What are we gonna do? Fuck it. I've very rarely been in a situation where I've done two exercises, took a break for 30 minutes and come back to finish the workout. I wonder if it'll be more beneficial to redo those exercises or pick up where I left off. I really am like kind of dumbfounded as to what the right answer is. So if you guys know the right answer, let me know. I would assume just pick up where you left off. Although I'm a creature of habit and I kind of like going through like my ABCs, you know, start with this way, go into this. But today we just simply don't have the time. So we're gonna just do what's necessary. And then when we do what's necessary, we're gonna do the impossible. Oh, wow. Getting my pump back. Oh. All right, next exercise. We're gonna superset upright rows with standing side laterals. Let's go in the back. Just 10 pounds. But when you superset it, you already have so much blood in that medial delt. This just enhances what's already there. We'll move up to 25s on the next one. These upright rows get a tremendous amount of negative attention on the internet, mostly by people with no muscle. And they say that this, in, this exercise is injury prone. It'll make you injury prone because you're impinging the shoulder joint. And that's so bogus. It's probably that you're injury prone because your posture is probably so rolled forward or your shoulders are either a shoulder hike or you know, you're know you totally not straight up top. So doing exercises like this, but practicing good posture, going down and back with your shoulder blades, getting a good positive position, keep your core tight, you won't get injured. Also, keeping the weight light. You're not gonna start with 45 pounds on each side. So this is not an exercise you should avoid. This may be an exercise that you wanna start working. This way you can build strength in those weak parts or those weak areas. Oh yeah, oh, we're harder, we're rounder. We're better. One thing I love about these two exercises, you can actually see the separation of deltoids. The delts are comprised of three different heads. You have a rear, a middle, and a front. Most of my emphasis is on the middle because that's what gives you the width from the front. Also helps complete that V-taper, giving you that X-frame look when you have big ass delts. I just love this exercise, behind the neck shoulder press. I feel phenomenal. There's no pulling, there's no discomfort. I guess I have extreme range of motion and flexibility in my shoulders, which means I do have a healthy shoulder joint. So this may be a more advanced movement. As I mentioned that sometimes upright row can feel uncomfortable for some. This may be a similar issue. You may be able to have to work on your shoulder retraction before you start jumping up heavy in weight. And uh, keep that neck neutral, don't crunch down. But when done correctly, it's gonna hit the entire deltoid, upper back, core, 
and I also feel like it does something to accentuate my V-taper. You might be able to see in the video on the next set. Now, that's pretty impressive, but Mike O'Hearn does like three plates on each side, Olympic barbell behind the neck press, seated. Maybe even more weight than that, but three minimum. I think maybe three or three and a half, even four. He's phenomenal. Next, we're gonna do the two heads to the shoulders that we neglected so far. We've done a ton of medial delt, because I believe that's the most important. Now we're gonna do front and rears. I would say in order, for me, the front is least important. They're already so developed from the front, but the rear would be great to complete the overall look. So we're gonna do bent over dumbbell reverse flies, supersetted with a 45 pound plate front raise. And I'm gonna be in a world of hurt after that. And that will conclude our deltoid day. Sometimes in the midst of the pump, you'll start to see machines and exercises that you'll say, you know what? One more exercise. And that's what we're gonna do here. Another shoulder press. But we're actually gonna be chest supported, facing the opposite direction. I actually feel like doing this actually triggers a lot of upper back as well. <laughs> I don't think I'll be ready. <sighs> this is what 230 pounds looks like. Not bad. And that will conclude our shoulder exercise. So I hope you guys learned something today that even when life happens, you'll have to stop your workout, pick up where you left off and make tequila with lemonade. What they say, make lemons and lemonade, something like that. But follow these key principles, train as hard as you can, incorporate supersets, Focus mostly on the medial delt and you'll have a crazy sick physique.